Well, I think that the the Dennis Wick mouthpiece that I play on um, is actually a really old one. It's probably between 40 and 50 years old. Um, but ever since um, starting playing corn, I've played the Dennis Wick mouthpiece. I started on a, off on a 5B, I think, which is a really shallow mouthpiece. And then went to 4B for probably uh, 20, 15, 20 years. Uh, and over the last five years, I've changed to a Dennis Wick 4. Um, but I just think that the, the way that they're, they're made, the way that they're built, they're just so solid and they're really, really comfortable mouthpieces, mouthpieces to play on. Um, and that, you know, a Paul Workman always blames his tools, doesn't he? So I, I just think if you've got the, the, the best equipment there, then you can make from that what, what, what you will. Um, but yeah, I, I have no intention of changing from, from Dennis Wick. They're just a, a solid mouthpiece. It gives me, I think, the, the most traditional brass band sound that a mouthpiece can give you, um, whilst being flexible in both high and, and low register, which is what we all want to we all want to achieve. And I guess you're one of those people that wants to trust the tools and keep things pretty constant, though. You don't like to sort of experiment around with different things. Once you found that thing that works for you, whether it was years ago, you, you stick with it, and then it's... It's about your development rather than, than anything else, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. Then I can I can never look for an excuse of them. If my, my top range is not working or my production is not good, it's not the mouthpiece's fault. I mean, um, this is no criticism at all. But a lot of my friends that play trumpet in, in orchestras, they've got a, they've got m almost bags of mouthpieces that they bring along to gigs, and they were constantly swapping and changing. And it, it does make me chuckle a little bit. Um, yeah. But yeah, if it works for them, then well, that's good. And, and that's it.